Dungeon Rap. Yeah, that's definitely a new sentence. This is my third time filming this video. Uh, the first time looked like this, and the second time looked like this. I am about ready to lose it. None of this is real. A perfectly fine statement by itself, but in today's situation, it is the subject of the video, an album released by the mysterious artist DJ Roswell. This album originally laid an egg in my brain, and it only recently hatched. I first learned about this album when one of my patrons, Boat, submitted it for a video review on my monthly I've Been Listening Shit series around about like March of 2022. Alright guys, this is where we get into the wacky territory. This, and then we got another one, but this one's really fucking wacky. DJ Roswell, uh, fucking none of this is real. By the way, uh, five bucks a month gets you a monthly album submission for a video review. Kind of a steal in my opinion. But this had such an interesting story behind it and bizarre atmosphere, I knew I wanted to bring it up on the channel eventually, I just needed a way for the stars to align. So first, let's start off with who is DJ Roswell? Well, it's a producer, uh, a member of the KFC Murder Chicks, uh, has an Instagram, and uh, that's about it, you know? But I'm being kind of purposely vague, because DJ Roswell's allure is kind of like pro wrestling, you know? The more you drop your guard and believe, the more fun it is. So DJ Roswell released the album None of This Is Real, an instrumental glitch hop electronic album on Bandcamp on February 23rd, 2013. Now kind of the reason this project like caught my ear in the way it did was for a few reasons. The vibe, the aesthetic, and the cool backstory. With no other information, the album cover is kind of intriguing in its own right. It kind of plays off that sewer infused garbage art that's been kind of popping off lately like see Sad World or for my distinguished viewers Cruelty Squad. So, uh, good job, DJ Roswell, for being the head of the curb of compressed garbage. So now for a little bit of an inside baseball. I tried to get my hands on a physical version of this album, and I'm unsuccessful. You know, I've been kind of showing off the physical version of the videos lately. So if I am continuously unsuccessful, then Cruelty Squad will play in the background when I talk, because I am jaded. Anyway. The meat and potatoes of this record comes with its backstory, which is explained on its Bandcamp description, which says the following. This album was recovered from a series of dusky, unmarked zip disks found in a condemned Massachusetts apartment building in 2001. It is believed to be the first ever fantasy, audio, hip-hop, roguelike tape to be released on Bandcamp. Each track is a vignette ranging from 12 seconds to 3 minutes. Rather intriguing, wouldn't you say? Well, I thought so too. But that's before I got smart to the ruse that's going on. Apparently, DJ Roswell likes to fake his album's backstory, so take for that what you will. And it's not exactly clear off rip that this is a false, fictionalized, or dramatized backstory. If nothing else, it's kind of like a good marketing ploy, you know, like a headline grabber, because like, I mean, it worked on you. Now, it doesn't just stop the weird backstory. The oddity continues with how you listen to this album. Explained perfectly in the intro track, Instructions. Yes, you heard it right. This album is meant to be played on shuffle. I have not played an album on shuffle since my balls dropped. I didn't even know the button to click to make it play on shuffle. Like the wizard said, <laughs> that was a funny sentence. This album is meant to be played on shuffle, so out of curiosity, I asked my subscribers on the community tab if they listen to albums on shuffle, and a whopping 87% of them say they do not. So this album is almost guaranteed to frighten the average Rate Your Music user. Also, I'm sorry, but y'all need to learn how to fucking read. I only listen to playlists on shuffle. That wasn't the question. Clear as day, black and white. Albums. God, I love you guys. But you know, it's kind of a cool idea, you know, the album that never sounds the same twice. Kinda has a cool ring to it. 
I do think it's a bit gimmicky though, because I mean like, what's stopping you from listening to any other album on the planet on Shuffle? But for fuck's sake, a wizard told you to do it. Does that mean nothing anymore? Adding to the bizarre nature of this, on the Bandcamp page, every single song is just titled, None of This Is Real. Giving you practically zero hope to ever recognize a single song that you like, and kind of giving credits to this blind, unrecognizable listening experience. Meanwhile, on streaming, there are song titles, and that's how I'm going to be referring them in this video, because an actual song title is a lot easier to remember than None of This Is Real 45. Uh. And don't worry, I know why you guys come here. My famous Jake metaphors. Let's for example look at this album like a table, right? You got the legs. The legs are standing it up. It's standing on the backstory, the vibe, and the aesthetic, right? But you need the top part of the table, the thing you put stuff on. Because if that part is not sturdy and will not hold up everything, then the only people using this table are pro wrestlers. Because because they break easy. Come on, guys, keep up. Hey, I spit when I was saying that. Sorry, guys. I've recorded this four times. I'm not going to fucking do it again. But to put a bow on this long, drawn-out analogy, the table, sturdy. Japanese table, sturdy. God, I'm killing with these references today. The music is good. Not only does the bit-crushed instrumental hip-hop sound great and have some genuine standout moments, but with the album on shuffle and a six second crossfade, the aesthetic is so strong that it sounds cohesive no matter what way you listen to it, and it's pretty commendable. The album is filled with awesome beats and ambient interludes, well-placed vocals and song samples, and this distorted ripped CD sound that kind of complements the original backstory. The compressed crushed sound might not be for everyone, but like, every now and again, I think a really compressed album sounds pretty good, you know? Every here and there, just as a palate cleanser. If you only listen to, like, the most pristine and clean instrumentals, go listen to the new T-Swift album. I think, personally, it's nice to dip your toe in the garbage juice every now and then, just to, just to shake things up. I'd say if you really want the authentic experience, listen to the Bandcamp version first, because that way you have a completely blind listen. And if you fuck with the sound, then you can listen to it on streaming, because it has song titles. And those song titles are how I'm going to be referring to my standout tracks. The track Break Yourself is kind of like the perfect condenser for this album. Weird audio samples of cryptid conspiracy stories, a bang and chop vocal sample, and compressed blown out drums. Kind of like a perfect genre identifier for dungeon rap. The track Sounds From Hell kind of starts off as almost like a noise song, but it ends up showing this album's versatility with how effortlessly a boom bap drum line is thrown on top of it. It kind of reminds me of the Danny Brown cut off the new Billy Woods album. The Walmart sponsored track, It Looked At Me, has this comedic audio sample of people describing where they're gonna find the best country music. Definitely not on this fucking album. Only for it to play the most eerie, dark, trap piano melody on the entire record. A really funny opening to the song, but the rest of the instrumental is so strong it stands on its own. Also, I gotta sneak in the track Bigfoot. It's literally just TJ Miller answering if you'd rather fuck E.T. or Bigfoot. Only the most serious music on the Bucket and Jake channel. If you had to have sex with Bigfoot or E.T. Bigfoot. I know that's weird. E.T. though, I think you're... I don't know about E.T. You know, I think you, I would feel like I was hurting him. You know, he's such a sweet little alien, isn't he? He doesn't want to be fucked. Imagine that, for Bigfoot. To peep it. I'll try and fuck that thing. And of course, my favorite track, the most banging track, the one with the coolest vocal samples, and the one with the best drums, Life Force. Potion Quest. This track has an awesome build to it, and the wizard sample just, ooh, it gets my goose geese in, man. And this track fits really well in a bunch of different situations, like in the real world when I'm walking around listening to it, which is usually how some of my favorite songs come about. If you can only be fucked to listen to one song off this album, I highly recommend Life Force. It is just a banger, and once you hear that first wizard sample, you'll know it's time to rock. Well, I mean, if you listen to this album correctly, then you'll have no idea what song I'm talking about. For Bandcamp listeners, it's the one that's like, Why you Dungeon Dragons? That's not how it sounds. I'm barely scratching the surface here. There's just a lot of tracks on this thing. 
But with such a long track list, it kind of makes the shuffle gimmick a bit more impactful, because according to my calculations, there's over 3,000 ways to listen to this album. I wouldn't say comedy is the right word for this, like, I don't think DJ Roswell was going for you to be like, oh, ha ha ha, what a hilarious track. It's more like... <laughs> nice. Is the album's fake backstory and shuffle gimmick a bit cheesy? I mean, a bit, but like... It's magic, you know? You're gonna have a lot more fun if you just drop your guard and enjoy it than someone who's trying to pick through all the issues. And isn't that what all wizards want at the end of the day? To listen to albums on shuffle? To live in Massachusetts in 2001? And to make a banging instrumental glitch hop album? I mean, I never saw Harry Potter, but like, I'm sure they mentioned that at least once. <laughs>